Manu or Alex, did you want to talk a little bit about what you've heard or what you want to say? Yeah. Oh, no. Um, there he is. I've not really ever planned having a long-term campaign, except once recently. My friend wants to do a Warhammer. Mm -hmm. He was like, look, we'll meet up and it'll be long-term. Um, but then that actually got messed up by me because the character I chose wasn't particularly suitable for long-term play. And then my friend was like, eh, we're going to have to just start something else then when this is finished. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's literally the only time I've ever purposefully thought, well, maybe we'll try and do this. It, it brings up an important point, though, that planning to do it seems to be a very minor variable in terms of whether it happens. That certainly has been my experience. And that's and, and everything Alexandra said about how everybody at the time really, I mean, you couldn't pitch a short-term game. Until the 2000s, you couldn't pitch a short-term game. Nobody would do it. They would say, what's wrong with you? Don't you believe in the game? Don't you believe in us? Don't you care? If you don't care enough to be in it infinitely, we don't want to come. But yet somehow, it hardly ever happened. I mean, I can... I, and I think I speak for many people, say the few times when it did, we hold those up as kind of the golden moments, right? Of back From play back then, before I started saying, well, short-term play is fun too. Why, why force it otherwise? Um, but uh, I want to I kind of focus on that point that we are really aren't talking about planning to do it at all. That's a that's a, a weak variable in terms of actually getting and, and when I say getting this to happen, I keep talking about it as if it is a higher goal or a better goal. And that's not what I mean. I'm just saying this is something that happens. So um, but does Alex, does that make sense that the planning yeah. aspect of it really isn't the key? I mean, oh, yeah, I mean. Yeah. It's not really long term, but as an example, we're playing Blades in the Dark fairly recently. And I really didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we're just going to have to shut this down right. and stop it. Right. But by episode five, enough of the situation developed. That I, was, I was like, actually, I'm quite excited now. Oh, and I could, you know, okay. so. Helma, you, you were gesturing. Uh, just a question, because it sounds, when I hear you, talk it sounds like the ultimate goal was long-term play because everything else was something we that were, we were was that. gone bad in some way uh, my own feeling is as as somebody who's completely new to the hobby uh, short-term play would give me the chance to look at a lot of different things different systems different games different stories and even so, we play a long-term campaign. I always find it nice if somebody plays some in-between games. Yeah. I don't have to be in them, but I want to watch them. I want, I simply want to learn. I have to, so much to kind of catch up to. Right. My, my game Sorcerer was not the first, but maybe one of the first explicit games to have optional stops. Uh, there's a mechanic called the kicker and that once you play out the kickers, you, you should really stop unless you're all willing to write new kickers. And it's, it's supposed to be like that. And so a lot of people play sorcerer for about five or six sessions and the kickers are done. And then they may or may not continue, but often they don't. And it's, it's okay. Um, so to me, you see, historically, when we keep saying, you know, the infinite game or you had to pitch the infinite game, we're kind of talking historically and culturally. This is the way we were taught. That's what the book said. You know, the whole thing of it never ends. This was what we were told or how it was idealized to us. For me, anyway, and for a number of other people, to accept that that didn't have to be the case was a little bit traumatic. It was a little bit of a shock. If so, I can add something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... For me, and I'm I'm 26, so I'm I I don't know exactly all y'all's ages, but I might be the youngest person in this chat room right now. Um, 
this is so uh, I know that this is the case because other people have told me that are older that this is what the campaign was. But for me, it's so alien as a concept mm -hmm. that you are supposed to have the game go on forever, right? Um, and I understand some some young people are also into this. It's just I like I never I never was um, because when I uh, started out. Uh, and Dungeons and Dragons uh, third edition at the beginning was proposed to me. I realized very quickly that I didn't like it, mm -hmm. and uh, the thing that I did was constantly go out and search for other games. And so I would con constantly try them out for a few sessions to see does this solve the problem? Does this solve the problem? And so uh, for me, the concept of going on forever. Uh, I mean, it happened. A couple of times that we had long campaigns, but for me, it's 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 a bit alien. The the question only question. Uh, okay, I have, I'm me, sorry. Go, go ahead, Alexandra. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah. Uh, when we are talking about um, age, I'm I'm not so so old. As most of you. <laughs> um, but um, Thanks. so I started in like uh two thousands, and uh. The, the concept of the uh, I don't know scenario in the in uh, let's say Warhammer, which is much older. So it was, I think it looked like it was intended to be played in a uh, one session. Like you can uh, start it, like play one or two sessions, and and be done with it. And it didn't told you that you're supposed to play other uh, games with it or whatever. Um, I remember that even uh, those like those guys who are looking for new games, they were uh, regularly um, telling something like, oh, uh, you know, we, we have this campaign, but I have a one shot to, to play. I have this cool concept for a one shot. And we gathered like for one or one evening to play this specific uh, scenario about something like um, with different characters, with uh, totally different premise than than the actual campaign. Just a quick question in between: uh, Can we pin down when the shift happened from a campaign has to be infinite? To a campaign, do you mean do you very like much culturally? maybe finite, uh, like in year or? Were you asking when did the hobby culture change? Yes, right. I would say right around two thousand. There were several games that became quite punchy about this. But you see, there's something else that's weird: is that short-term play was always in the hobby as a convention experience, especially. And also in practice, people would end after a few sessions with like a natural ending. And then they would say we stopped, but maybe that was a good stop. Right. But it just they didn't have the language to say that. But I would say that it became very explicit about 20 years ago. Exactly. Um, I, I may have played some role in verbalizing all that, but um but I know I wasn't alone. Herman, what do you think? Yeah, yeah well, what, what one, of my, one of my thoughts also was that uh, when I started out, so before 2000, there also weren't all that many systems you could choose from. Um, I mean, we, we all we mostly played D&D, &D, and sometimes I was the one who brought, who f discovered another game, and we played a couple sessions of that, uh, or, or maybe a small campaign or, some, or uh, a couple of adventures. But... Everyone just played D&D &D and that, that was all the games they owned and all the games they that, that the group I played with, that the people I played with uh, were interested in. And most people weren't interested in the game of the week or adding new games all the time. And the only thing you could, could readily get was AD&D uh, &D when, I, when I started playing. So that might also have played a role in having one single uh, sort of mono, more of a monoculture at least in the in the group I played with. So were the systems um, promoting themselves as systems for basically endless play? Many of them, yes. 
Um, and even mm -hmm. ones where the conflicts that began play would seem to beg for an ending simply never mention it. So there was a tacit acceptance as well. And I'm thinking about the White Wolf games in which often start with a very dramatic push and one would think that a, a climactic ending was, you know, oh, but there's also another issue too, which Alexandra brought up, the idea that there is a planned climax, not an emergent one, a planned one. And the phrase to run through, first it was run through a dungeon, literally, and then it was run the campaign. And this was more like a military campaign, like a planned mission managed event through the course of many sessions. That's why yeah. I was sad to see Ivar's go because he has a lot of experience with that. But, yeah. um, but anyway, so does that help a little? There is some ambiguities in there. The answer is yes, but there's ambiguities in terms of what we actually meant and did. I can give some examples. I have been thinking about the campaigns um, that have been in that have been long term, and um, but that also ended right. And they they their common feature was pretty much that there was a there was there was kind of a plot device. So, for example, in one of them, I was I was a a um, a player for the Savage Worlds campaign called Fifty Fathoms. And the GM ran it just the, like there was a campaign book, right? That had all the encounters, and there was this the, there was this goal which you had to defeat the the sea hags, right? There was a big world threatening problem, and it took took us like two years, but the the we we finished the campaign. Um, then in another one, we we made a homebrew campaign, which was like a multiple worlds, multiple GMs kind of thing, but it also had a similar um there was a similar kind of plot device like you had to get um we had to assemble this this uh device by getting one thing from one world one thing from another world and and then that ended at a certain point when uh, that plot when we achieved that goal and uh similarly like my my current D, &D campaign there's something similar like the people have to find these different um, <clears throat> these different uh, magical items in order to stop this undead threat, right? And it's gone on for almost three years. And it'll be interesting to see whether we keep, go with that, whether we keep going after that. So, like, we're approaching the, yeah. the end now. That, that, that variable and of a formal <laughs> structure, like an external one, especially a public one, is a very, that adds a lot to the, the context, like raises a completely different host. So anyway, sorry. Yeah, and I, no, that's okay. Um, I think that's true. And, and um, I think Call of Cthulhu is interesting in this regard because your characters don't usually last that long. You know what I mean? Like either yeah. somebody, so you get eaten by a Shoggoth or something or you go insane, right? Mm -hmm. Um, fairly quickly. So even like, uh, you know, there's, there's kind of longer term, um, campaign, there's campaigns like horror on the Orient Express or mm -hmm. mass of Nyarlathotep and those kind of things. And then there's a lot of one shots, like this, right? Because right. The, you yeah. know, your character is not expected to survive. It was developed through convention plays so much. Oh, that really? That's where, okay. that's where these, all these one shots come from. Um, so, uh, and again, I'm missing Ivar because he's kind of the expert in, in when he has fun with these and when he doesn't, which is really uh, interesting. interesting. So, yeah. Um, but, and uh, so to yeah, come, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think Circle of Hands is an interesting contrast, right? Because um, that it's more, it's more, it's more character focused. And yeah, it's not, I don't know when, when that becomes. Have you come to any conclusion about when that becomes? goes longer or because you don't the have that feature that right that kind to of talk to right now mm. is mm -hmm. uh chris christopher who's been posting it at its play about his circle of hands mm. game and the way that he there came a point especially this is a kind of on purpose for the game's design when everybody is feeling invested in the characters as a group and as the 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 circle gets goals 
that the players are feeling strongly about. Um, and as mm. characters die, um, you get the, that's when you sort of have a reason to keep playing, right? Otherwise you're just revisiting characters that you only play occasionally. And the, it, it's like striking sparks. It's the game is built to be very enjoyable sparks. If that's all you do, but it can catch fire. Mm. And then you don't know how long it's going to go. There will be until then the questions become philosophical. What are we really doing here? We're traumatized, you know, we're, but we're, we're proactive. What for? Um, and so uh, that's why I don't have any of this, the, the young king that they all work with or that they're all the circle for doesn't. That's why I provided no ideology for the young king. Only a number of social developments and tensions that nobody in the setting has understood or has written down. And so they don't have an ideology. They don't have, you know, a, a social goal yet. So it, it, it's, it will only catch fire and become long-term under those circumstances. I've seen it happen. And that was when I started realizing it was what I was designing for, for Circle of Hands. Um, I don't want so to... So what were you designing... What were you designing for again? I was designing in, what, for people not to be allowed to invest individually in a single character oh. as their justification for continuing to play. Uh -huh. For people who don't know, Circle of Hands doesn't permit you to play the same character twice in a row. And everybody owns all of the player characters. But you own duos fully when you're playing that one. And so every character is played by multiple people and every, and, and if a character dies, there's more characters than there are players and mortality is quite real in that game. And so you tend to have a few martyrs along the way. Um, and so it's uh, but the point is that the traditional means of investing in long-term play is because you've fallen in love with your character <laughs> And while that's a wonderful thing, in this particular game, I was interested in the love falling for characters that were played by other people on and off, not just you. And also that you ever you felt like you loved this character because everybody had had a hand in it. You loved the way they played this character too. And but also what the group became when it became evident what the group was about, what the circle is about that you, you care, right? And that's what I, where I wanted the, the impetus to actually play long-term to come from rather than just having your person that you've invested in and the investment. So I was removing sunk cost in your character creation and advancement. Interesting. Yeah. So that was on purpose.